I wanted to do something that just had a few tracks and they were all long and really fleshed out. And we dug in there kind of like a, uh, like a, a live gig, you know, where a tune could be 20 minutes or something like that. So, so we want to do that. And I was kind of thinking um, as a classical clarinetist originally, uh, a guy who didn't touch a saxophone until I got to college, I, I, I was thinking more of like a classical tune that would have three or four movements to it. And, and that's kind of where this started going. And that's where we were, landed with the, the, the clever Story at 11, kind of that play on, hey, tune in tonight, Story at 11, uh, since it's my 11th album. Mike Jeff for Chicago Jazz Magazine, chicagojazz.com, and welcome to another episode of Around Town. Today we've got saxophonist Sean Maxwell. He's got a brand new release, Story at 11. He's got a release party coming up April 14th at the venue in Aurora. Uh, this is his 11th recording. Of course, we've had Sean on. He is not a um, a stranger to this show, but we haven't done it in virtually. I, I well, no, we did virtually one time, I think, but he's been down to the hot dog stand. So he's, he's one of the originals. We all love Sean Maxwell. So Sean, thanks so much for being here and congratulations on this great recording. First of all, thanks for having me, man. It's always a pleasure to be on here talking with you. I always appreciate it. It's always fun. Uh, yeah. Story at 11. It, it came out of, uh, 2020 the end of 2020 beginning of 2021 when we were just kind of we didn't know what was going on so like like everybody sitting at home and just practicing and composing and figuring out what the heck's going to happen um really this album came about because my several albums before that were a lot of tunes original tunes but but shorter length you know anywhere from like uh one minute to like three or four minutes it wasn't like a, a long one dig, digging into it and actually in the beginning of 2021 i put out uh an album that had like almost 30 other musicians where we all recorded our parts at home during the pandemic and it was a lot of tracks but the longest track on there is like two and a half three minutes so what I was thinking, you know, this was going towards the end of 2021 when we, we started to record this, is I wanted to do something the exact opposite. I wanted to do something that just had a few tracks and they were all long and really fleshed out. And we dug in there kind of like a, uh, like a, a live gig, you know, where a tune could be 20 minutes or something like that. So, so we want to do that. And I was kind of thinking um, as a classical clarinetist originally, uh, a guy who didn't touch a saxophone until I got to college, I, I, I was thinking more of like a classical tune that would have three or four movements to it. And, and that's kind of where this started going. And that's where we were, landed with the, the, the clever Story at 11, kind of that play on, hey, tune in tonight, Story at 11, uh, since it's my 11th album. And what we did is I, I composed this thing in four movements, and each movement is a, a part in the journey of like a story or, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I use the, uh, hopefully I don't get sued by this. I use Wizard of Oz as kind of um, a, 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 like an example for it. Like the beginning appointment with originally I was calling it appointment with wizard. Like we're off to see the wizard, you know, this is, this is the start of our journey. Uh, and then like the second one, eternal rift is, where you get that first thing of like, oh man, this is kind of hard and this kind of sucks and I maybe want to quit this journey. <laughs> and then near surrender is where you're like at your bottom, you're like, you know, or, um, you know, that point in every Rocky movie where he's beat up and you're like, oh, I can't go on. <laughs> and then Ants and Arrival is kind of reaching the end of that journey where you got through it and kind of resolves and ties it all together. And throughout all of those, it's, you know, each track is about 10 minutes long and we have a lot of improvisation in each, but I have a lot of composition that ties each track together, whether it be like chord structure or time signature. And just, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things that you definitely can listen to each track individually. It stands on its own, but when you put it together in my, at least in my thoughts, it, it tells more of a story that ties together. Well, you know, it's interesting to me because doing it in movements, um, you probably could have broken a, a couple of these movements into like two tunes, I would imagine, or something like that. But I like the fact because it, it like listening to Eternal Riff, we were talking about it a little bit before, um, you know, there's a lot of interaction going on. I know that you're staying within, 
you know, cords and, and within the time signature and things like that. But there's a lot of interaction going on. And because the movement, you're not rushing to get to the end of a tune. I, th- I feel like it organically, unlike a lot of like recorded music, organically, it feels like it's a, a live gig because you guys aren't rushing to get to the end of everybody's thoughts. You know, you're letting things breathe. You're letting things organically grow. And when you were in the studio recording this, I mean, you know, I mean, I, you must have like five or six takes of each movement, I would imagine, or or I don't even know how you would put it together. Or do you just do it all at once and just say, let's just do this movement today and you just play it and just let everything just flow. I mean, because there's no way to go back and do overdubbing or any of that on here. This is like true playing, I think, right? Yeah. Well, well first of all, we we decided we wanted this to be like a live gig. Uh, and and we wanted to approach it that way. So the first thing we did, we recorded at um, uh, electrical audio, uh, and we decided no headphones. We're doing this all live in the room, and we were just in like a little kind of box circle facing each other. Um, and so that right there made it more, at least for me, I, I hate wearing headphones and improvising. It just, you know, it, it felt more like a live gig, which feels to me more natural as, you know, no, no offense to recording with headphones and everything, but it just felt better. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't have a lot of extra takes. I mean, there were a few, but I mean, we got what we wanted, if not on the second or third take. I mean, we just kind of went in. We knew we, we recorded it in order. Um, because I wanted just us to feel that even when we're recording that. I know maybe saying it aloud, that sounds kind of pretentious. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, but, it makes sense is what it sounds like. It sounds like it makes sense because you're you're building on each movement. I mean, it'd be like, shoot, you know, like when they shoot movies and all of a sudden they shoot the end of the <laughs> end of the movie. The first scene is like the end of the movie. You know, it's like, well, OK, I don't know how everybody adjusts their brain. But if you're trying to be creative and play this kind of music, it makes total sense to go from one to four. Right. It did, and and at the end we were we were we were spent. <laughs> we went through that journey. I, I do remember Colin uh, Clausen, the pianist, and hopefully he doesn't get mad at me. The last tune we did a couple where we we scrapped it, omitted in because of like some different time changes, and he like left out a roar of some uh, profanity and, and upsetness, and got out of the system. And then we laid down the best track of the <laughs> period and. After that, I was like, that's it. We're done, guys. We're not no more. So did you do it? Did you do it in one day? Is that how you went through? We did spent one day at electrical and, and uh, just kind of recorded for, you know, taking breaks and stuff. Uh, but I think it was overall we were there, started recording to end was about five hours or so. Wow. Okay. Not straight breaks and everything, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's so when you're writing something like this, right, you're talking about the Wizard of Oz, but you're really talking about a journey. You start talking about start the kind of like the beginning of the journey and then the middle of the journey and then trying to get to the end of the journey and finalizing the journey and all that stuff. But I, I mean, theme wise, thematically wise, compositionally wise, I mean, you're obviously, you, you know, you're not thinking about music from the Wizard of Oz. So I mean, <laughs> conceptually, how are you coming up with like melodies? And then you have a lot of odd time signatures in this. I mean, you're, there's a groove in 10. You're you're doing different things like that, too. So are these tunes that you've been messing around with on your own or just playing around with ideas? And then you put the put the composition together and brought it in to the group. I mean, how what's your process like for that? Well, I'm constantly writing. I, I'm just writing all the time. And then if we look at bright side of the pandemic, I wrote a ton of things. Even there was just like little ideas, if it was a measure or a rhythm or whatever. So um, I, I'm constantly going back and I have what I call the, the junkyard uh, on my computer, just all these finale uh, files where I just pull up and take that and that and put it together. So um, I have a lot to work with. Um this one, though, I was kind of trying to, again, I, I go back to the classical thing of like, you know, I, I, it, it, where, where you state the, the main theme in the beginning and it kind of comes throughout the whole thing until you kind of finish up. So I was kind of thinking of it more like that. And um, I've accepted the fact that I were accepted. I'm good with the fact that I'm more modern jazz. And in there, I'm mixing in a lot of elements of, you know, funk and stuff that doesn't swing. You know, so I kind of was trying to think of that style. And when we do go to weird time signatures, 
is it going to a weird time signature just to do that or does it serve a purpose and does it also is it there where you're listening to it and like yeah this is cool but this feels weird i think a lot of times unless you're sitting there actually counting or whatever you're not even going to know that it's doing that because we're trying to do it so that it's like not kind of how do i say it hit you over the head just for the fact of doing that does that does that make sense yeah yeah i mean it it actually the groove if you didn't know it was in 10 you wouldn't know it was in 10. i mean it, it just feels natural to your point right it feels natural and you know when when you're talking about the different styles and you know we talked a little bit before we came on but i say this with a lot of guests especially a lot of guests that are in your generation which is somewhat my generation too, but I mean, you know, we grew up, we were influenced by jazz for sure. But my first influence was like, you know, Led Zeppelin, Iron Maiden, Grateful Dead, all of that stuff. And then I found Miles Davis and went backwards and learned everything else. And that was all during high school and pre-high school and all that stuff. So you're, you're influenced by all of this, but that helps you, especially you, Sean Maxwell, as a composer and arranger and a player, everything has to come out of your music because it's the natural process. So it's like, I don't go to see somebody play jazz necessarily. I go to see Sean Maxwell play. I don't, you know, I, I go to see Chichito uh, Valdez was just at the showcase, right? I just saw what, that's who I went to see, or I went to see Bobby Broom, or I went to see, I'm going to see them because I want to hear their voice. I want to hear their compositions. I want to hear what they're doing. I think that's where jazz is now, but of course that's where blues is. That's where rock is. That's where pop is. That's where everything is. So I hear, you know, from one step to another, and obviously I've heard all your recordings. I don't remember them all by, you know, from memory. I'm sorry, but <laughs> don't quiz me. Don't quiz me. But, but you know, I, I hear the natural progression. And with this, I hear your voice completely, you know, all of the different styles, all of the different experiences you have are coming out in these compositions. Well, cool. well, cool. Thank you. That that's that's the goal. And and if I offend the jazz police by saying this, amen to what you just said. Uh, when I stop worrying about I have to sound like this or do that, you know, a handful of albums ago, I um, again sounds weird to say I've become myself. And and as much as I uh, still listen and study and love the the jazz giants that came before me, I don't want to sound like them. And I, I think some of them who have been past. Uh, passed away a long time ago if they were around now they wouldn't be doing what they were doing then so uh kind of i think i got to jazz a little later than you it wasn't until college till i even knew what the heck it was but yeah i i was big into you know rap and rock and classical and everything else and i i feel in all my recordings but especially in this one you get an element of that now are we actually rapping no (laughs) uh no one wants to hear me do that Uh, (laughs) but but I mean, there's there's elements of it. And I think that, that along with the elements of the jazz and what I, I do like, you know, there's a lot in there. Like, you're not going to hear Cannonball Adderley kind of stuff in here, but he's a huge influence on me. And if you listen really closely, there are hints and stuff in there. It's just kind of mixed in there uh, for better or for worse with more Sean Maxwell on it. Well, and, and it's it's you, right? I mean, that's going to naturally come out. You're not sitting around saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to play a cannonball lick right here, and then I'm going to play. Yeah, I mean, you know, give me a break. I mean, this is coming out of you. This is your voice, and it's the natural progression of everything. And, um, you know, so you can hear it throughout. So, you know, going from one step to another to another to another, by the time you get to answer and arrival, um, you know, just talk about, because it feels like to me, it, it's like, it's like, a release at the end of this whole thing, right? I mean, you guys really let loose and it just like releases. Do you perform this live and how difficult, because I know you've been touring and stuff, you know, you're playing these tunes and you're playing them live and every night has to be different, but it's also got to be changing every night since the time you recorded it, right? Because you're just getting more and more, there's more ideas flowing, I'm sure. And there's, it's just more and more interaction happening. I mean, how has this changed since the last time you recorded it to now? Well, like you said, every tune evolves eventually. Um, the, the good thing is this core group that I've been playing with, Colin Clausen uh, doing keys, Michael Barton on bass, and, and Greg Essick on drums, we've played a ton together, like even leading up to the pandemic. And, and in the last year and a half, two years, we've been on the road quite a bit, which is awesome. So it, it, it's never the same, but it's hard to explain. We've just got a good 
core together where we we're just great with communicating with each other, you know, like in not like, not, Hey, we're going to do this and do that. We're just playing and following wise. I mean, um, so, so it's evolved a bit, but it's still the same. And, and of course, like, like anything, like you said, it's going to, if we're playing it the exact same way, every gig, something's wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it's, then we're not, there's no spirit of jazz in there. Um, but, but um, I, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's, I just think that the, the group is so tight now because we've done so much and we just know how to communicate each other on, on all of my, my stuff that it, it's, it's pretty similar every time if that, if that makes sense. It makes a ton of sense. So I should mention, you've got the uh, CD release coming up April 14th at the venue in Aurora. Of course, tickets will be at seanmaxwell.com. I'll just send everybody over there. The new release is on seanmaxwell.com. And, uh, you know what, man? This is this is exciting. You just keep turning out great music and and cranking along. I'm sure there's going to be dates being announced um, after the release show on April 14th. So we'll stay tuned for that. But uh, man, congratulations on this! And it thank sounds you. wonderful, man. It sounds wonderful. Thank you. I always appreciate it, man. So thank you for having me on. Everybody, go check that out. And of course, as I always say, all things Chicago jazz on chicagojazz.com. And until next time, hopefully. I will see you somewhere out on the scene.